Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Cormier. This is Rizo 14, week one. Cheers. Uh, it's been a fun time so far. I think uh, we'll start right off the bat with the challenge for this week. We have a, an introductory challenge that for all those people who really are just getting used to it, maybe haven't done an online course before, or certainly maybe haven't done an open course before, find a place to introduce yourself to everybody else. The most important part of this first week is that you get to know a couple of people, that some people get to know you. Whether or not you start a blog and go to wordpress.com and get everything set up, or you go to the Facebook page or the Google Plus page, or you go to the course site on P2PU, wherever you're comfortable, go find a place, tell people who you are, why you're interested in this course. If that's all you get done this week and sort of try to catch up with all the tweets and the stuff, that'll be a really good start. So if you're not sure where to go, start doing that. Read some people, um, follow the Twitter uh, hashtag Rizo14. Maybe go to the Facebook group and look around. Just get yourself acculturated. For those of you who are either willing, who have more time or are starting out but still want to push harder or maybe are more familiar with these kinds of environment, week one, uh, our first challenge, the first challenge for week one is cheating is learning. I think that the idea of cheating is a really nice story to take. And I mean, rhizomatic learning is story, right? That's what we're looking for, ways to take the things that we all understand and find a new way to talk about it. So for me, the story of cheating is a really interesting one to dig into. So in order for something to be cheating, you've got to have a set of rules, right? And those rules have to be controlling the way that we do something. So in a normal classroom, the cheating is taking the answer from someone else. But in order for that to be true, there kind of has to be one answer or a set of answers that are correct, which gives you this whole power structure that's in place, right? So a teacher decides what's correct. They set up rules around which all this stuff happens, which really gives the power to the traditions of our culture, right? And then learning becomes about taking the traditions, the conventions that we've developed around things and passing them forward. Now, whether those conventions are, are, are science conventions like gravity, I mean, at its core, I mean, the simple gravity, we drop something on the ground and it falls and all that stuff, and we all accept that to be true. At its core, the science is a little crazy, and some we, we understand some of it, but the way that most of us talk about it is really just a convention, right? They're, they're just they're traditions that we're passing along, and traditions are good. It's just we talk about them like they're true, when in reality... They're pieces of understanding that attach to other pieces that we have and form the ways that we interact. So when we focus on the idea of cheating, we get to disrupt all of those little power structures. And I think it's a really powerful tool to get us thinking about learning in new ways. So in my classrooms, in the first day that I teach, one of the things that I try to set up my students with is a situation where they simply cannot figure something out by themselves. They need to cheat off other people. They need to, to group together, collaborate, you might call it. But what it means is, is that there's no way to find the right answer. You've got to take it from everybody else. And we sort of try to get the word cheating out of the classroom entirely so that by the end of that class, there's no way to think of cheating as a possibility because we've taken that power structure out of the way. So that's the way that I think about cheating as important. Uh, you're more than free. And certainly if you look at the discussion forums in P2PU right now for week one, there's already people taking this in a lot of really great directions. And that's cool. But for the challenge for week one, what I'd like you to, to try to do is take the idea of cheating and use it as a tool to deconstruct, to, to, to take apart some of the power structures inside of whatever environment that you're in, whether you're an educator or you're somebody who does various kinds of teaching in different ways, whether you, you're workroom, whatever, find a way made up or otherwise. Because again, a story about something that's not true is just as valuable as one that is uh, in terms of giving other people ways to learn from. Because what you're not only writing this for yourself, what you're also doing is offering up this story for other people to learn from. So that community becomes the piece that we're learning from. So take cheating, use it as a weapon this week, and then post it somewhere where we can see it. Um, as a bonus, uh, assignment for those of you who are super keen or, or who want to try something else. I would love to see somebody um, put together a piece that would give somebody some remedial help with the idea of the rhizome. So somebody who, who is, and I don't mean deep, dark, postmodern philosophy rhizome here, but give people a little bit of a chance 
to understand, at least from your perspective, how the rhizome interacts with learning. So we've got maybe 20 or 30 or 40 people in this course who I recognize as having lots of experience with this. Take that experience and bring it to bear, if you would. Um, and so we have three possible choices. One, intro, tell people who you are, what you're hoping to get from this course. It's really, really helpful to get to know people. Two, take cheating, use it as a weapon. Three, if you're that, if you're in that sort of zone, talk to us about how you see the rhizome, how you've applied it to your own learning. Um, that's week one for now. If you look on the P2PU site under week one, the schedule of events will be up there by tomorrow morning. And um, those are the times we'll be meeting. And other than that, I'll keep posting my unguide to the course that shows you where the Facebook group is, where the Google Plus group is, where the Twitter chat is. And I'll keep adding other stuff that I find as I go along. Thank you so much for coming along. And thank you very much for your understanding and my total inability to keep up with all the wonderful work that you guys are doing. I appreciate it greatly. Uh, I look forward to talking with all of you in the next uh, six weeks. Uh, fire back and uh, you'll keep hearing from me. Cheers.